Yo, 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 what, what up, what up, what up? Oh, How you doing, oh, everybody? Yeah, yeah, give it up. What's give happening, up. people? A tired mind. Tim's down beneath a crawling dawn with half-moon eyes, half-blinded by the brutish smoke of solitude, living life alone, unviewed, unnoticed by the postman, and untroubled by the news he never skims through. What instead he turns in his palms in bed, like a planet, brushed in shadow and beautifully blue, is his own heavy-heartedness, which he carries like Atlas held the heavens and studies like a scholar. Remembering Muddy's memories, makes them dim and transforms them with time to something false. To fathom is to find them phantom, and Tim's eyes, the color of water, are to be kept clear. Outside, the skies are smeared a sickly pink, veined with lightning like thin skin stretched from where the world begins to where it ends, and under all the thunder and lightning is Tim, sat at his desk and studying his sadness. From time to time, he tiptoes through his house in soft-socked feet on floorboards to clatter piles of plates and retrieve more tea in china cups. Sometimes haunted by the moon, but it's gone soon, replaced in space by the rising sun which slices through the blinds and touches Tim, wallowing in the wetness of his mind's eye. He finds nigh a million melancholy things to linger on and draws them down, pencil lines them, defines them thin and spindly or solid, shaded, jaded heartbreaks and aged mistakes that still sting. He sits at his desk for days and days without a break, left to go soggy with sadness like unwanted cornflakes. He tiptoes through his house to retrieve more tea, sometimes haunted by the sea which sings in its chains outside, or sometimes haunted by the striding figure in the mirror as he passes. Never stopping for a closer look, Tim returns to his desk and his sketchbook. Piles of paper fill his room and slowly grow like the trees that fell to form them. Cityscapes take shape and bring the walls in. Even in the brief windows of sleep that Tim allows himself, he concentrates not on counting sheep, but on counting lost loves, on the flower wilting, on all the fallen men. Back curved like a question mark in bed, he's quilting the melancholy memories that live inside his head and shrouding himself. A tired mind, Tim's down beneath a clouding sky with glass jars lining the shelf. See, Tim wants nothing more than to touch a loved one's skin and to feel them warm and vital deep within, but he's been living his life along and alone for so long now that lonely seems the only way to be, with only the memories for company. But remembering Muddy's memories makes them dim and transforms them with time to something false. To fathom is to find them phantom, and Tim wants to keep the pureness in his life alive, not let them turn with time to lies, not let them sculpt themselves unwise. To re-revise might compromise the sincerity of memory, the clarity of his nostalgia. So, when certain of the future pruning of euphoria, Tim set about creating an emporium of all the good, of all the nice, of all the powder parma violets and sugar mice, of all the grey day walks with wind-whipped hair, of all the times now thin as air and bottled them. Now you may say that a memory can no more be contained than the polar easterly, but Tim practiced preservation. He soaked his best memories in alcohol, and pickled them in vinegar, sweetened them in sugar, kept them in the freezer, found out what was easier and what worked well, how to keep the core and store the shell, and now Tim's happiness sits in jars that line the shelf. He even labeled them himself. One says first kiss, one says last light, one says Christmas, one says that night. To keep his sparkling past preserved means leaving them all undisturbed. They float like boats in bottles bobbing in formaldehyde and watch Tim as he strides his lonely way for cups of tea, haunted by whatever time of sky it is. If it's the sun, how high it is defines the light that shines through lucent glass and casts the recollection's shadows on the wall, all amber in the alcohol. <laughs>